Well, since there isn't much going on, I thought I'd show you my equipment. The only thing going on are the warblers. They're so loud. They're beautiful. And I wasn't fast enough, but I just saw a yellow warbler, which is about that big, flitting through the trees. It's amazing places that you can put a tripod. All right, so if you've never gone turkey hunting before, I'm gonna show you what I use as my equipment. Most important thing, a thermos of coffee. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You know, I gotta say though, early mornings, it's great to have some hot liquid. And the reason you hear an airplane is because I'm hunting in a buffer zone for the MTA. So we're gonna hear a lot of that, unfortunately. It, it just changes your whole perspective if you have some coffee with you. So let's get down to business. My garb is Real Tree Edge. I've had these clothes for years. My pants are too, full of pockets, lots of room to stick things in. Let me show you what I got in here. In this pocket is where I keep my phone, and this is my lunch or my snack in case I get hungry. And today I have some meatballs, some cheese, and some olives, and some homemade maple sponge candy that I got out of a old cookbook that I have around the house. In the other pocket, I keep my Primo's box cutter. This is my fa very favorite turkey call. And it comes with it comes with its own chalk specifically from Primo's, but unfortunately, I lost my chalk. I've had this five, six years. The chalk has always been inside, but I lost it this year. So what I'm using is a little piece of pastel. It's a little pastel stick, and it's giving me the same sound. I just rub it on the edge to get that raspy call. It's a great, great tool. You press your thumb on the indentation, give it different kinds of pressure to change the sound. Well, they're probably listening, but they're not going to let me know that. You do a nice purr with it. Just like so. Hold it from the back. Two fingers on the cover. Change the sound. Press your thumb on the indentation. little cutting. Gently rest your thumb on the opposite side. On the other side, just tap. Anybody behind me? <laughs> Wouldn't that be something? So that's how I use that. I got a little mess on my fingers. Oh, something about my hunting clothes, I never wash them. Never. Ever. They, I mean, they have to get really, really filthy dirty. And I carry my box call in a sock in my pocket. That way, it doesn't move around too much, make too much noise if I'm moving from one place to the other. Although, I don't want to attract another hunter's attention. Uh, although it's getting into mid to late season, there aren't too many hunters out. Um, I haven't heard any reports of this area where anyone has tagged turkey. At least not yet. But the month isn't over with yet. Don't want to attract another hunter's attention. So, 
just in case as I'm walking around I, oh, I don't wear my vest during spring turkey or fall turkey but I keep it hanging out of the top of my my backpack just to get somebody's attention and when I'm sitting down to hunt I just stuff it back inside and everything's nice and camouflaged now you might have noticed this on the outside of my hunting bag. This is the prop or the stand for Gertrude. She's my girl. I don't have her out today because I kind of started late. I wasn't sure where I was going to set up. So she's not out in the field. But Gertrude is a turkey hen decoy. She's in the alert position. She's always attracted attention. And she's just a cheap styrofoam decoy. Very, very simple. Oh, she ripped. Yeah. That's not so cool. She's starting to get... She's going on probably six years old. I try to take really good care of her. But she's not too bad for a cheapie. Right? She's got that beady eye and that ugly head. She's got good body size. I don't like these stripes on here, though. But what are you going to do? It still, still works, most definitely. So I've got her packed away. I bring this awesome saw with me. The name has worn off. But I won this in a JV Outdoors giveaway back in January. And if you're not familiar with this channel, please check them out. I'll leave a link in the description below. But I use this in case I have to cut some branches or uh, I might feel that I'm a little exposed to the world. So I put up some branches around me, just prop them up against trees, um, like this tree back here. I'm in really good cover right now. So I'm not too concerned about breaking up my profile because that's really all you have to do when you're out hunting is just keep your profile broken up so that you're a lot less detectable. And of course I bring my tripod with me and in order to keep that disguised I have the top half of a ghillie suit here. My gun is in my lap because I was taught long ago by an experience I had. I wasn't paying attention and I had put my gun down beside me, right next to me, instead of being in my lap. And I'm sitting there, and I'm waiting, and it was spring turkey. And all of a sudden, out of the corner of my eye, I see a turkey creeping into the field. I was sitting on a hedgerow, similar to this, with an open field out in front of me. And I see him coming out of the other side of the hedgerow. Well, what do you think I did? I went to reach for my gun as slowly as as I could with gloved hands but he saw me so after that experience and of course he hightailed it out of there after that experience I taught myself to always turkey hunt and any kind of hunting with your gun on your lap that way you have a lot less movement when you go to get into position so, word to the wise, don't put it down. Um, so this ghillie suit, pardon me while I put the gun down again. Safety is on, always check that safety. You see an S, that's a good thing. Always, always check your safety, always. So this ghillie suit, I could be wearing this, I just don't feel the need. I, I seem to blend in pretty good. And there's a lot of cover. My outfit matches the scenery pretty well. 
and I used to wear this in the beginning and it it works it works pretty well but what I'm using it for these days is to hide the silver legs of my tripod so I just drape it around the tripod and with the hood I can actually put it over part of the camera because I'm kind of a, a glitzy gal sometimes and my camera has a lot of sparkles on it. It's a purple phone with a sparkly otter, clear otter box so that will attract light. So that's what I do with the ghillie suit. Now, let's look at my gun. I absolutely love my gun. This is called the Calvary. It's made in Turkey for American Tactical from Somerville, South Carolina. And it, it's a pretty gun. It's a double, here, let me, safety first. Let's unload it. I don't want to shoot my camera off the stand. <laughs> I'm very, very strident about gun safety. <sighs> Open chamber, empty barrels. This is a double shotgun barrel, over and under. It's got a really, really nice bead sight at the end. I don't know if you can see that. There you go. See that right there? And I hate to say it, but as the years go by, that sight is getting blurrier and blurrier. But you know how it is with shotguns. What's the saying? Spray and pray? <laughs> well, you want to be as accurate as possible. I don't go for butt shots. I don't go for half-ass shots. It's got to be right around here. Definite kill. It's got to be right on every time. If I'm not sure, then I just won't shoot. So yeah, it's uh, the wood furniture. I like it. It's a 20 gauge, two and a quarter inch chamber. Very simple gun. I love the stock. In fact, uh, it looks a little dry. I'm gonna have to take the oil cloth to it. Uh, this strap is not meant for this gun, but I made it work anyways because of this, this bridge right here. I had to kind of shove that through and then tie it. But it hasn't impeded my hunting at all. Very, very nice gun. And it's got a very, very easy switch right here. Well, not really a switch. I'm not sure what you would call that. It's in safety mode right now. Look down the barrel, make sure nothing's in there. What the heck is that? I'm fanatical about keeping clean barrels too. In fact, if I'm walking through the woods and I suspect that there might be one dust speck in there, it's like Horton here's who, boil that dust speck, I'll unload my gun, open the action, and look through. And yeah, there was something in there. I think it was a bug or something. But anyhow, this is very, very easy to use. It's in safety right now. not in safety. It's in the over position, which is this. This is the over barrel. And then automatically, once I fire the over, it will automatically switch over to under. You see the U for under? It's really nice that way because if I don't get off the cleanest shot that I want, I have a second chance. I love double barrels and I love over-unders. They just have a great look to them. <clears throat> and now it's loaded. Safety is on, and it's in the over position, because that's usually what I start with. I always start with the over, 
Um, I have two different chokes. The over is a tighter choke than the under. The under is a wider spray. Um, I like it that way because I want that first over shot to be the killing shot. And then, of course, if there is a mistake made by me, I have a second chance with the under, and it's a wider shot. Um, if you don't get a clean shot off the first time, you don't want your animal to suffer, and they might run a little bit. So the reason for the wider spray on the bottom is in case they're on the move. And I have not had to do that yet. Um, I have had a chance to use it in the aspect of uh, like double hunting squirrels. And let me explain that to you. What I mean by that is, except for this last season, usually my luck with squirrels is pretty incredible. I'll sit down by a tree in the woods, in the beautiful open hardwoods, and there'll be like a bunch of down trees in front of me, maybe about 25, 30, 35 yards. And I'll sit and I'll wait. Once the dust settles, they start to move around a little bit. Well, I'll see one and I'll shoot them. And it never fails. Right behind me, what do you think I hear? I hear another one scolding me, like on the tree up there. So, one barrel is empty. I'll turn around. It already switched over. The gun already automatically switched over to the under. And then I'll get two. Pretty much in the same few moments. And it always seems to work out that way. And then I'll sit for a while. I won't go pick them up right away. I'll sit for a while, take the empty cartridges out, put new ones in, and then the same thing will happen again. And I hope to get the chance to show you how that works someday. We'll see what happens. So anyhow, that's my gun. I love my gun. It's a beauty. I hope you do too. <laughs> Here's another couple of tips. If I'm walking across uneven ground, or if it's wet, and I think the rocks are slick, I'll take my gun off my shoulder and hold it in front of me with both hands. That way, if I slip and fall, I can get the gun away from me, hopefully, fast enough. Of course, the safety is always on, but I don't want to fall, and then the gun slips off my shoulder from the shoulder strap, and I don't know what direction it's going in. So if it's in front of me, I have more control as to where the gun goes. Here's another thing to think about. Now, my hunt is over. Uh, we have to stop hunting turkey in New York in the spring at noon. It's about three minutes to 12 right now. I'm on my way back to my car. Now, I've been sitting in the woods for literally hours. There may have been a hiker that came through but you don't know what else has come through. Could have been some deer, could have been some turkey walking through the trail here. So what I do is I keep my gun loaded, but with the safety on, within, I don't unload it until I get to about 50 yards of my car because I'm coming out to a public road and it's a public access parking area. But the reason I do this is because my gun is still loaded and I scare something up because it's been quiet for hours. I'm the only one sitting out here. You never know what's gonna happen. So you wanna increase your chances as, as much as possible. Another very good reason for unloading your gun and opening the action before you get to a public access parking area is that right here where I hunt, it's state land. And the environmental conservation officers patrol this area. Now, if I were to come out here with a closed action gun and he saw it, he would have to assume that that gun was loaded, but he can't assume that the safety was on. So that's another reason why within 50 yards of the car, I open the action, I unload it, put the shells in my pocket, that way there's no question and nobody has to get nervous.
Have a good day, everybody, and thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.